Another example that exists in the book is a story that took place when I was at Hawthorne. I think you're already, Andy, you were already at Brisbane at this stage. 1994, when did you leave? 95. Oh, you, you might know this story. <laughs> uh, so I was on the bus on the way to Phillip Island with Andy and about 45 other of our teammates. Do, do you know what the mm. story is? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and as we were leaving Glen Ferry Oval just down the road, we're in this beautiful suburb of Hawthorne, um, <laughs> The bus driver, without, as far as I know, anybody's consent, just turned on an X-rated pornographic film. Of course, I'm thinking, oh, no. You know, part of me was going, oh, wow. <laughs> the other part thinking, I don't need this. I knew I'd seen, it, I'd seen it a few times before, and I knew this is poison. I don't need this. Probably no one else knows that needs this. And I thought, what am I going to, you know, what can I do here? Of course, I wasn't in a very easy position to do anything about it. I was sitting at the very back of the bus, right in the middle place where people with legs like mine have to sit to have some relative comfort in the bus. Buses are shopping, aren't they? And I thought, what am I going to do? And it was going on, sound effects, and I thought, oh, maybe I'll just look out the window, you know, <laughs> this. But I couldn't do anything about it. And I just, I just found myself standing up and walking down the aisle. I was terrified. I didn't know what I was going to do. And I thought, what are my teammates going to say? As you know, we had a lot of big personalities and, uh, you know, terrific players and terrific guys, but I thought, I'm going to get, I'm going to get cop so much rubbish now. And there was this accumulative, ooh, Stevie, that was my nickname. <laughs> Stevie's going to do something, you know, and I had no idea what I was going to do. My knees were knocking, my tongue was going dry, the sweat was dropping down the side of my face, and I was terrified. What are they going to think? I didn't know what to do. It was a long way down. <laughs> and just before I arrived at the bus, at the, at the bus driver, I noticed immediately behind the bus driver was a player named Luke McCabe, who I knew was 17. So I had this thought, came to my head just at that moment, and I leaned down into the bus driver's ear and I said to him, you have a minor on board this bus. What you're doing is illegal. I didn't know if it was. <laughs> 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 Turn it off. And I thought, you know, he was going to say, yeah, off or something. <laughs> to my great shock, he didn't turn around, he didn't say anything, he just simply turned it off. That, that was different. That was different. But then I had to turn around myself. <laughs> <laughs> and all of my 45 teammates, I don't know where you were sitting at that moment, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like I'm walking back, and if I thought it was a long way walking this way, it, was <laughs> it seemed a double as long that way. And I walked all the way back to my seat, but no one said anything. So I sat down, two guys talking to each other, two guys talking to each other, general rhubarb, rhubarb in the bus, and nothing. No one mentioned it. No one mentioned it, in fact, the whole training camp, three days. No one mentioned it that whole season, not once. No illusion, no comment, no nothing. No one mentioned it to me, in fact, for the remainder of my footy career, for 18 years, until... The funeral of Alan Jeans. And I was having coffee with Andy Collins and Darren Pritchard, both of whom played three premierships for Hawthorne. And Andy Collins raised it. And he said to me, Do you remember the time you turned the porno off on the bus? I said, Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I do! I wondered if I was starting to imagine it. <laughs> he said, Well, you know what? As you know, I've been coaching in South Australia for the last four or five years. And I do a lot of public speaking. I go all around the state, speaking to schools, speaking to sort of leadership groups, speaking to community groups. And he said, often on the topic of leadership, and I always tell that story. I said, really? <laughs> you know, I'd never heard it back. No one had mentioned it to me. I hadn't heard it around, someone referring back. He goes, yeah, I reckon, I reckon I've told that to about 10,000 people. <laughs> I said, really? Here am I thinking no one has ever thought of it. You know, like it was just gone and come and gone. And what I learned, and I think the reason why I was able to, why I was told that story back from him, was because it taught me that you just don't know your audience. You just do not know your audience. And so from that time I realised, you know, to do the right thing, irrespective of whether people see it or there's 50,000 people watching or whatever, it has its own power, so just try and do that. And that's one of the, the lessons that I drew out and which I share in, in the book.